All right, what's going on everybody? It's FD Fishing here. I was just gonna do a quick little once over on my seat. I've seen a lot of different things on YouTube on how to uh, make them a little stronger for us guys who weigh a little more. I weigh 220 pounds, so I wanted to go ahead and make sure that I, I was gonna get a good long lifespan out of a, my kayak. So I what a lot of people do is instead of using these track systems at all here, you know, they'll pull it out, they put little spacers on your main tube down here, and then they don't use the tracks at all. They just let it sit right here and then ride in the front tracks, which could work. But um, those little spacers you're going to put up under there create pressure points. If you read reviews, I know a lot of you guys have if you're watching this, creates pressure points and it'll actually crack your kayak right down there. So what I did was I looked at it in the sense of I want to gain strength from my tracks and I want to gain strength by using the actual body of the kayak itself, which is what these little black mats are down here for. Um, so what I did, as most of you guys know, no matter where you are at in this track here, there always seems to be that little gap between the body of your kayak and the actual bar right here on your seat. So a lot of people put a pool noodle on there, which will work, but a pool noodle's foam. When you put your weight on it, the pool noodle's gonna collapse to absorb that weight, but it's not actual, it's not rigid. It's not, they're actually really providing some sturdy support, in my opinion. So I went and I got these mats. They're just little step-up mats that you can put on your trailer for grip. They're probably about uh, 2 sixteenths of an inch thick, and they're perfect for that gap here. So if I get real close, you can just see where I put them on there. They stick down, self-adhesive, and they're actually perfect. Um, for uh, oh, for filling in that gap right there, so that I have contact between that bottom that bottom rail all the way across. And I also put one right up here because I ride when I actually go out. I put my um, I don't even use any of these the three notches here. I come all the way to the back, so I put this here so that my metal bar is not actually rubbing into the uh, the plastic here, which can create delamination. I've also read about people having problems with that. So uh, one of the bigger things. The first, uh, the number one thing that I did is uh, I went in here to the actual bolts that are inside that go through your seat post and I put grade eight bolts in there. I also up, up them to quarter inch thick. Now it says the ones that come in are quarter inches thick, but they're, I mean, if I'm getting real picky here, it might be a few millimeters shy of an actual quarter inch thick. So I put those grade eight bolts in there. You can see the bolt runs all the way through the end here and I mean, I can, I can make a video and get really in depth on this if you guys would like it. I feel like it's pretty simple um, to really figure out. So step one was I upgraded those so they're not gonna bend, they're not going to uh, potentially crack, snap, any of that while riding in this track here. So once I upgraded that, I put the mats in. So now I have the tracks along with the actual frame of the kayak itself supporting all of my body weight. So in my opinion, that was the best way to truly get um, the most solid support out of this seat that the uh, Ascend comes with without having to make drastic structural changes. I mean, I've seen people, you know, you've seen it too where they rig it up where they've got the post sitting on top of here and all that. And I mean, it's a cool idea. That's what you want to do. Personally, I just wanted to try to keep it as close to how it came as possible. And that's the way I did it. So I'm trying to, I've got one hand working here. Try to set it up real quick so I can slide this back in there for you guys. One second. And it goes in just like normal. Just got to make sure that you line up your pegs down here. And slide it back. I will say with this big the rubber mat that I have in the rear here, it does get pretty, uh, well, pretty tight there towards the end. But that's how, you know, it still fits in there just like normal. You can see through the back there. Sorry about the lighting. You can't really see it too well. But there's no gap there at all. And then my front, the front bar rides right on top of that rubber mat there. So that way um, it's not digging into that plastic. I don't know if a lot of you guys have used these for a longer period of time. You can see in these grooves or wherever your actual seat sitting down at where it's, you know, it creates a, real, a pretty rough spot. And like I said, I've talked to a couple of people who have had problems with uh, delamination with these, uh, with the plastic specifically under the seat, which is a, pretty important area for the longevity of your kayak. I don't know if you're like me, but a lot of people call this an entry level kayak. Well, this is, in my opinion, I think it's a awesome kayak and I don't think $600 is cheap whatsoever for a kayak that I can only go out and buy myself and not entertain anyone else. I think $600 is pretty steep. So for those of you who make the money where this is a 
a really cheap option. Good for you guys, but everybody else, keep watching because I'll show you everything that I've done trying to save a couple bucks. Not really going to get into actually going over the kayak itself, but it's set up pretty much every, like uh, every other uh, FST. 12T you guys see on YouTube so if you guys want I will make a video um, My opinion it's nothing too extravagant or overly special, but it's special to me and it's set up just how I want it so Anyways, uh, if you'll have any questions feel free to ask